Welcome back for the final game of the week. I'm Freak, that's Kobe. Together, we are Phoebe, he has decided. <laughs> and this is our handshake. Now, Phoebe sounds like we combine into like a single fluffy animal. Which I is like great. That's the direction I'm going with it. I'm, I'm happy to be okay. a fluffy animal. Now, before we jump into the match, I want to shout out all of our amazing, outstanding, super duper, more superfluous words, fans, but specifically, Simon Rusnak, who uh, participated in our 100 Thieves vs. TSM poll and earned a Cone Pro mouse and Vulcan keyboard as a result of that vote. So thanks for being awesome, you specifically, but also, again, absolutely everybody who's watching the show, who's participating on social media, who's calling me out when I'm stupid, who's telling Kobe he's great when he's great, who's you know, <laughs> cherishing the players when they're awesome, all the above. Uh, yeah, it's definitely been super fun, you know, being back in studio and everything. Yeah. Can't wait for everybody to join us as well. Uh, looking forward Jersey. to finals already. Visit LCS.com. As Kaizen said, you know, CLG might be there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and here's the, the fun part, though, is like we are getting down to the end or like the, the end parts of the seasons, right? Each, well, these teams have 10 games left. Everyone yes. else has nine yeah. games left before playoffs start and top eight make playoffs. Dignitas are all but guaranteed to be there themselves um, after the great start in spring. They've, you know, given themselves a really big buffer. It's been really rocky in summer. But, you know, they, they are getting better has. week over week. Yeah. Um, CLG, sadly, are one of the teams on the outside looking in. I believe they are tied for the least wins in the league. And with FlyQuest getting that 3-0 run, uh, they have some ground to make up that they want to make postseason. Which makes me approach all these games with, ooh, what's going to be the fun thing CLG bring out next? Yeah. Because when you have nothing to lose, if you are on the outside looking in, you're willing to do some crazy stuff to get inside, freak. What are you going to do to break open that door, join yeah. the party? Mm -hmm. You know, they had the vault breaker. They had the Vi all in, bongo comp. That was fun to watch. What's going to be part two? I know they have creative people on this team trying to delve into this stuff. You know, Moon as the coach, yeah. always been a super big fan of him. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very creative jungler himself. So excited to see what they try and come up with here versus Dignitas because you got to also approach your your matches as which ones are really winnable which ones should we definitely be getting those wins um and this has got to be one of them for them right. with with what you're talking about our dig kind of the slump from from summer to spring and the the roster changes have not been very kind to them this has got to be an attackable game yes it does so we are that getting hair baby it's, yeah it's let's the, go it's pob nice styling nice look uh, yeah, for context, while you saw that graphic show up, uh, one of our observers uh, either didn't connect or somehow to the game, so they went through the bands of Champ Select, yeah. then are going to remake Champ Select, go through those bands, and then we'll have that up on air. So uh, we got to see the bands twice. You got to see them very briefly for those who were watching very aptly online. Uh, I didn't catch them, but we'll have them up. I on wasn't, because I like to remain spoiler-free, always. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about, like, when you're currently casting? Like, always. Just, <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'll wait to see who won that EGC9 game. I don't yeah. want to be spoiled. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's wise. Um, don't spoil them now. I, it's really hard, too, with some of them. You mentioned Loki previously in, oh, the, right. in the other game. I don't watch them as they're coming out. Ah. I like to binge watch everything. Okay. So I build up at least two or three before watching all of them. Yep. That has actually been one of the shows that's easier than others to avoid spoilers. That's I good. feel like there's not as big of a rabid fan base maybe, or uh, or maybe it's just a, a kinder fan base that doesn't like spoiling. Let's get right into the pick ban yes. here though, Freak. Spoiler, what's gonna be the final ban? Is Thresh. Okay, no, we didn't have enough time to spoil. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't know. I, I wasn't watching closely enough, but we are on to the Rift Toss at 17 wins. CLG only at 10 with some room to make up. Diana instantly picked up again. Uh, once again, easily fits any double or triple AD comps. Uh, it does often make you lack in frontline if you're not running something a bit bigger like a set as mm -hmm. one of your two solo lanes or a really big tank, but... Uh, still can work pretty well. Viego dropped uh, right away by CLG. Renekton is conspicuously available for Dig as well on the second half of their picks, which pairs super nicely with Diana. So very, very interesting stuff here. Viego is taken by CLG, so I consider it more of a jungle pick now. Seems like they, they saddle themselves with an AD jungler as opposed to Dignitas, so there should be a lot of fighting over those those two differences for the solo laners early investment into this varus though which 
has been so high priority with the lethality builds plus the the lane priority that you get with it you know having thresh banned out makes it very difficult to go Ophelia. so uh some pretty good options and we do in fact get that renekton on the side of dig pairs so nicely with the diana uh, but you've got a lot of backline assassination threat pairing it with the akali here for yasui okay leblanc somewhat the same this can actually work pretty well together anytime you can you know get a bit of varus poke throughout half leblanc finishes up you get a, a viega reset that can look good and it's my single favorite counter to akali not just because of the lane you can you can punish her early in the lane you can use your chains to reveal here uh, set her up for jungle kills very easily, but also because of the difference in where you're trying to have your power spikes here, CLG really want to try and make moves early on, pre-6 here for the Akali, uh, try and get those jungle invades down. I think Broxa has looked best when he has come into these games with a preset plan. Hey, I'm a lot of them have been towards top side previously, but I think sure. this one should be towards mid. Hey, I'm going to come gank, you know, level three. We're gonna have this set up here. You know, I'm just doing one quadrant, passing through mid, ganking over and then and finishing off the other one. This to me should be one of those games because if you are saddling him with the Viego, which I, I think it should be, even though Dignitas are still banning out some jungle bands here, his uh, his early ganking power of Rek'Sai taken away. You know, LeBlanc can set up for Viego perfectly. The uh, chain lands. If that, if that thing doesn't snap, then guess what? The yeah. stun from Viego is going to land as well. You get about two seconds to find your way around the minion and then, you know, hit W channel for a second and, and land your own effects, I like that. Yeah, it, that's, <laughs> that, that's what happens when the mist hits you and you just get stunned for the second and a half. It's, uh, it's how it goes. Uh, we can ship that into the game. His next legendary, that'll be the sound effect. Just let me know uh, beforehand. Uh, when, you know, he turns to the light and becomes a sentinel. I have no idea that's what's happening. Uh, <laughs> truly, have truly, stopped a while ago. <laughs> I should have. I, this is my autobiography. Three, should have stopped a while ago. <laughs> Leona locked in as Braum has taken off the table as a support. So CLG definitely have even more aggressive tools. Leona locked down. Can make it pretty easy for Varus to land damage as well. That can be pretty bursty, of course. So maybe they can yeah. go a bit defensive in their bottom lane. I was going to say, it's a really scary bottom lane for Dig already here. So probably go super uh, defensive. Neo has been one of uh, the strong Ezreal players, I feel like, has sided pretty closely with this champion. So no surprise there. Having the arcane shift available is so necessary when you're facing this much CC. You know, Varus Leona lane has just so much crowd control, lots of kill threat down there. They get to choose a lot of these opportunities in setting up possible bottom side plays and, and dragon focus. And that's where I expect CLG to point towards. Generally in champ select, we can usually come out of early game you know, areas of the map that each team would rather focus on. In this one, it is CLG bottom side and mid. In the Dignitas one, it is definitely top side there for Renekton Diana combination. Meanwhile, Yasui tries to not give up too much lane pressure to the LeBlanc early on. You focus on the minions. LeBlanc actually doesn't push super fast. A lot of her pressure comes from, you know, kill threat and attempting it that way. And then after pushing you off, she can, uh, you know, try and uh, push them in and, and whittle them down. But should be sort of a bod bottom facing arrow for CLG, bottom triangle of the map, and, and top side there for Dignitas. I'm happy also to see Aphromu on his Alistar though. Yeah. Signature champion for him. This guy has, has had so many points throughout the history of the LCS where uh, you know, he's been feared as a sport and they really did need that last form of main initiation for the team because Renekton, if you get big, especially you can have a big impact later from flanking, mm -hmm. but it still is just a single target stun. And you still are pretty heavily reliant on your flash later into the game. Meanwhile, Alistar there for Aphromu, they always rely on him to be the big playmaker for this team. And he's got the champ to do it. All right, should look good. I want to also shout out the Dr. Mundo into Renekton. I think that is a great champion overall. A ton of bonus mm. health ratios. Uh, you can just rush the Anathemas and go target the Renekton and feel good about that one. And um, yeah, I think it's it's good in the lane because, you know, you just like immune the stun once every 45 so, seconds or faster. Yeah. And, and yes, you don't get stunned, but it's still a lot of damage. So I think while I agree that it should be talked up as a matchup, it is not a universally good pick into Mundo because Renekton still is going to get early priority, still can have kill threat on this Mundo. You know, you oh, there is a cost to that passive. You What? They're in the crash? What smoothie? What? Uh, okay. okay, he's just dead, right? So I know CLG are a team in the past, where it, he's dead, that are known to do level one prep. 
And if if their prep was Dignitas literally never stacks the bot lane, they only does one thing, then I see it. You walk up, you go for an aggressive ward. But like, you have to be so sure Dig will never do this to make that play. And Dig's level one prep could be like, hey, so Smoothie likes to ward Raptors level one. And they're like, cool, let's have to brush him. This, yeah, that, that was definitely... <laughs> what very, else did he say? It's well-set plans by Dig. Uh, and, uh, and you know, referring to uh, looking at previous VODs and, and trying to pick out tendencies is one thing. CLG have not done that, though. And, you know, Smoothie has not done that repeatedly in at least the last two games that I can remember. So there there's something there, and it's, it's well-laid plans from Dig. Yeah. But when your well-laid plans also come to fruition that quickly and that easily, it's just... That, that is the, the perfect scenario. All right, well, if you missed it, because you're listening to the audio only, um, he got first blooded by invading towards the red buff. Now, if you're doing Sunday errands and can't watch these games yourself with your eyeballs, then make sure to check out the audio only cast on League Day. Uh, that was my transition, because uh, it was going to be a good one. So there we go. You can always switch over and check them out instead and, yes, and sir. have a specific audio only cast. <laughs> Not all the things that you can see are worth commenting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Smoothie walked in and died face checking <laughs> on the brush behind Red. That uh -huh. is that is the scenario. He also died quietly as soon as he walks in and there's four people. You're just like, oh yes, I am dead. So yep. just walks his way out. You know, no no flash blown or anything. Yeah. It, it doesn't change a lot of how uh, the bottom lane, you know, summoners are going to be. It does mean that Ezreal gets the. Best of both worlds getting to start the Doran's Blade and the tier, which normally he has to yeah. choose between. That's outstanding. Yeah. That feels really good for him. So early mid pressure coming in from the LeBlanc. Pabelter put a ward on you know top river to track uh, any early Acadian ganks. That shouldn't be a lot of gank pressure from Diana Akali. Anyway, there's no CC pre-6, so you know not a huge threat. Uh, but we also saw the CLG bottom lane do really well. Alistar is almost not a champion at level 1. Flash pull is almost never worth it. And so a lot of aggression from Turtle and Smoothie. Trying to get some poke, trying to get some decent damage, and, and maybe force one potion or Neo, but they haven't done that just yet. Yeah. All going kind of according to plan here, as expected. You know, the LeBlanc abusing the Akali early on. Uh, the Akali is focused so much on trying to uh, get as many of these last hits as possible. Doesn't quite get that melee one under the turret either. And now Pobelter free to continually harass him. Now, again, with the Renekton Mundo matchup, uh, and I kind of liked the discussion that we were having. It's just that <laughs> level one early gold went down. And now we're going to have a roam from mid towards bottom as well. All right, headbutt backwards, looking at Nia. When's he going to be attacked? Not at all, actually. Pulp comes in. No one has aggro. There's one minion left, so Smoothie gets to walk away. Nice defense by Dignitas Afrim, who zones out the primary engage and stops his AD carry from dying. It is going to be a very low-cost roam from Pulp Belter, though. I believe only loses out one melee minion in his transition right back up to top side. So we'll see if Neo and Aframu can keep the wave where they want it. If it won't be stunned, but he will lose some health. There's a stun, or it would be coming across. Nice. Flashes to pick it nice. up. He might have gotten it. I'm not sure, but Fake God is there to claim the kill and walk away with the second one with no deaths. Renekton and Diana Freak telling you what a combo. And on that Mundo, he is not safe. And here we go. Now they're going to keep fighting the bottom side. Though it's CLG who wants it. Aphromo, though, himself should be 200 HP and safe. And now Smoothie going to take 200 himself on the walk back to his turret is not safe. Yeah, you don't get stunned, but you still take full damage from it. There's a health cost to popping out the canister. I liked the flash over to the canister for Finn. He played that about as well as he can, you know, trying to get as much sustain, but just played better by Fake God with the slice and dice out afterwards. No counter kill given over, so huge things for Dignitas. And if we remind ourselves what we were pointing both teams towards in Champ Select, the top arrow going straight there for Dig, they capitalize on, on their point of power. Meanwhile, the Ezreal Alistar, not only have they been able to remain just fine and super safe on bottom side of the map, but, you know, they got the very free first blood by stacking the wave behind red. Mid lane, though. All right, big damage into Poe Belter. Almost a for W, but not just yet as he jukes out with the passive. Ooh. Flash, not going to get enough follow through. It is a safe uh, escape for Pelter, burning his Flash, then his late W to get away. Yeah, so what you have to do there is Flash and immediately E to stick the Shuriken in the LeBlanc, ensuring that she will not be able to get away. 
went for the QE. A little bit of time there allows Bo Belter. He does get out. Prox is under attack in his own jungle there by Acadian, though, and the teleport comes through. Level lead for Diana. Has Flash get away if he needs it, and indeed Acadian will do so. Sees Bo Belter. Says, all right, I got to get away from this one. The TP from the block was going to be a bit of pressure. We'll see how much CS is even lost there as a bit of damage comes in. Honestly, Acadian having to keep fighting this battle, and Bo Belter just TP'd back in, and he's under 300 health already. I love going for that as a jungler as long as he doesn't get caught here because he knows the... Ooh, oh, he does get caught. No, he walked in for too much. Acadian, ah. you had what you needed, but Brox and Smoothie came down to finish the job. It was such a good play with the caveat of as long as he doesn't get caught. If you turn back around there, gets caught by the support roam timer from Smoothie. Too aggressive, then there's a huge price, uh, price to pay. But if he doesn't get caught free, this is a huge value play for junglers to make. Chunking out a LeBlanc right after the teleport was used to get back to lane, plus delaying Pobelter from getting to the big double stacked wave that Akali had just pushed to the wave. That that was going to be very profitable until it wasn't, until the kill gold does go over. This is another look though. Uh, the ward towards the blast cone, uh, not completely 100% uh, sure as to the, the purpose there, but this is the one. You know, goes yep. in, as soon as his wards get swept, he's like, ah, shoot. And the E range there from Smoothie yep. capitalizes on the kill. So huge things there for CLG to get that money back. But the idea was from Acadian, hey, I'm going to chunk this guy out after his teleport. He'll be weakened in lane. He can't punish my Akali. Plus, he's going to be delayed on getting to the, the minions towards the turret that Yusui had just ushered up there. And that was his goal. Of course, and maybe could have, you know, sniped Brox on his way back to Raptors, take another fight, because obviously with mid-pressure to look good, but... Conqueror was stacked. You yeah, know, but Smoothie joined the team on the recall, and the, and the Trinket Ward was not in a spot where it Support saw that Death, math freak. up. Support, Support Death, Support Death, absolutely. <laughs> the only kill CLG has is on Smoothie. It's a little sad that, you know, Leona got the gold there, but it's a good one to get back at least. It's a conversation always worth having as far as, hey, our bottom lane matchup, you know, Alistar and Ezreal, yeah, it can be super safe. But if you always give up lane priority in any matchup, you know, any lane, and, and that's going to be an assured factor, the cost is your opponents then have roam timers. Yeah. And this basic fact of League of Legends is one of the things that is most heavily utilized by the very best teams, is using the early timers with which to roam from default positions mm -hmm. and capitalizing on that to create then your own advantages. It's, it's yeah. very simple, but it can be utilized in so many ways in League of Legends, and it's kind of the building block for, for building your own win condition. It's a really interesting topic, uh, as this game is lulled for now. Uh, for example, you have champions like uh, Talon, where his win rate actually climbs with ELO, because shove and roam is like really effective when you're yeah. a challenger and you're really good at getting down a bot lane and killing someone. Um, but sometimes, you know, in this case, I agree with you on, about, on support rooms, right? Sure. Uh, but for example, uh, Think Card, who's one of the LCS coaches, I forget for which team, is like, well, but champs like Talon don't work in pro because that's really trackable. Talon pushes mid, walks down. Hey, Talon's missing. Hey, he's going towards bot side. Whereas Diana or Leona recalls off bot pressure, she can go to any three lanes. It's a lot harder to track which way Leon is going off bot pressure, right? Whereas Talon's like, well, he's walking up or down for mid. And so that's always kind of interesting, like seeing, you know, what kinds of pressure, like, <laughs> like really test skill and which ones like can't be played around. And I also like the, you know, extra wrinkle of, it is much easier for coordinated teams to do this play around missing champions and play around pressure uh -huh. for uncoordinated teams. It's just like, what do you want me to give up this cannon? Do you want me to give up <laughs> minions for this? Just always, like, come on, I handle your business. Yeah. Well, speaking of coordination though, they have shown up top lane and Dignitas already found a lane kingdom for fake god that is going to be Oop. even better it's built off the rubble of fallen empires as finn the lone doctor will lose his top lane outer turret at nine and a half minutes into the game nicely done to manage to get herald aggro and keep the second charge happening that's well done good job there otherwise that turret would be at about 25 percent and it would die soon afterwards uh, but 2200 gold lead for dignitas looking at win number 18. Yeah, it's, it's definitely according to the plan laid out by them, too. So once again, this is another instance of the team playing to their points of strength early. Guess what? Renekton and Diana, they just keep returning to this power. I, I like this as well as just a much easier you know, thing to rely on rather than trying to cover up you know, weak areas of the map or play around your opponent's strong points that they might want to push on. 
Very, very straightforward there for Acadian Fate God. Get the Rift Tail, they pop it, and now this is one of those timers we talk about where you've got that super strong matchup for top side early for Renekton. Yeah, can just smash Mundo, bully Mundo. Mundo is going to scale later on and be a very big factor, but it allows you to do other things with Fate God's time. And so he makes an attempt to ro roam towards mid, well played around there, you know, no reason for Pobel to, to extend, overextend or anything, and it, it doesn't result in anything, but Digger remaining proactive in their endeavors looking for this play. Okay. Dragon number one on the board, waiting to be attacked. Nice try by Smooth. He wants to catch a Cadian coming through the brush. Doesn't quite land it. I believe you can still catch at the end of that range there with Ollie popping, but uh, just doesn't get the timing quite right. Regardless, we will not see this dragon taking damage just yet. Dr. Mundo again on his recall. Nathema's chains in the inventory for Finn, finally. As Fate God is on his way towards what I'm guessing to be a gore drinker and uh, just has to, you know, sidestep that because of the early executions for his laning phase. And now looking at a mid roam as top was pushed in. Something we talked about earlier, right? Use lane pressure. Try to get your advantage to go somewhere else. Maybe turn that into a dragon. There's distortion used by Povalter. Will they dive this one? That answer is going to be no. I believe might have had his ulti be second distortion. Actually, that's uncool then anyway. So uh, theoretically, maybe, but flash was up and it makes it tough. But with that pressure, they walk down for the dragon. Yeah, normally you kind of shrug off the cooldown of distortion because it's such a low cooldown for an ultimate. But if dragon's already available, don't go for that dive. While distortion's down and LeBlanc's just been chunked out mid and uh, the wave is pushed in, that means you just won your dragon. So yep. congratulations, Dignitas. They just transitioned right in through the river. Pick up dragon number one. Everything's still going swimmingly. Plenty of time for Fake God to get back to the minion yep. wave that was slow pushed up to the tower. And he lost all of three melee minions for about a minute of walking mid. Identifying if there's a dive. Okay, there's not. Dragon, okay, that's ours. Walk all the way back. Cool, I lost 63 gold. Would you pay 63 gold for a guaranteed dragon? I would in every role in the game. This is why these roams are good. That's why top pressure was great. Fake God barely lost anything for this play. And if we, again, turn to analyze some of the, the matchups and the picks here that, that have been drafted for Dig, they actually, because they have so much assassination threat with Diana Akali having a lot of backline accents that is very hard to deny, especially if you if you are unable to land your CC. Um, yes, if your skill shots land, then it's going to be a lot easier to peel, but that threat is going to remain for Dig later on into the game, and Ezreal is actually quite well situated to add extra damage there, especially once you get your Muramana transform, your ult, all of a sudden it just does so much damage covering over the top and that can add the extra damage to assassinate the threats behind Mundo so you don't find yourself having to work through the Mundo in a lot of the team fights. how mm -hmm. CLG would rather you play these these later game fights. Yeah, it's one of the nice things about Mundo though is that at least he is somewhat of a damage threat. Uh, we saw from the Team Liquid game, for example, uh, Alfari did the most damage on his team as, as top Mundo, but he is more of a, a juggernaut classically than a tank. Like think of him more like a Darius or a, or a Mordekaiser where like he is actually going to be threatened. Like Wild Turtle cannot ignore him in the way that you could like ignore an Alistair. Yeah, and it's also important to categorize effective damage or damage on priority targets yeah. versus damage, you know, yeah, on front line, on bruisers, very slow burn damage that is predictable, is still damage, it counts towards your stats, but that's why people value burst so heavily, mm -hmm. because you can apply it to the correct targets, you can apply it to get actual kills, and I think, yeah. you know, Mundo is definitely one of those champions that uh, skews very heavily towards uh, yeah, of course. a lot of the increased numbers. I mean, if we did the game-wide damage graph right now, I'd bet um, probably like five to one that Finn and Fate God are the top two in the game right now. And certainly Fate God got a kill from his fights against Finn, but Finn hasn't killed a single champion. He's done 7,000 damage. Okay, cool, you fought for your waves and like maybe denied three CS off <laughs> harass, but like, you know, while Turtle 5,000 damage kills Yasui and Neo and Akkadian in a team fight, yeah. right? I, I like how this game is, uh, this is our theory podcast game. It is. <laughs> it's a slow game. <laughs> yeah, We're chilling. Much more. Uh, this is discussing, uh, you know, League of Legends 101 topics yeah. uh, here with, with Froby. <laughs> or Phoby. Phoby, yeah. The one thing I have discovered, though, is if you read the hashtag, it's phobe, mm. which is like, you know, I don't know if we're afraid of anything. I think, like, we're pretty dauntless. We're, we're just generally people. afraid uh, yeah, this of is, all things. <laughs> the undertext is, the subtext is, yeah, we're just fearful all the time. Who knows? Let us know. Do you think we're afraid or not? <laughs> Leave us in the comments below. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Be very afraid, yeah.
They actually, it's actually worse scary. I really don't like it now. Now that, oh, that, yeah? that I feel like we need to churn. We need All a right. new one. <laughs> is, it, is it back to Froby or Freebie? Fro Froby does still sound like a cuddly animal, so All we'll right. that one. We're Froby. <laughs> I like that. Thank you, man. Okay, so Froby is the new hashtag. PRH. P H R O B E. Let it be known. Spelling is hard sometimes. Okay, that's why I talk for a living. I don't write. Yeah, much. even if it is the beginning of your own name. <laughs> yeah, it, it's to be fair. It's my oh, own screen name. Oh, look at this. It's almost team just selection here. Aframu, kind of the red <laughs> rover there down on the bottom, Aww. got sent over. But that's a true support. Okay. Yeah, that's true. The gold is being because to be fair, the reason Smoothie is up there because he stole air quotes completely. Yeah. You know the kill on Acadia and Bad so, boy. Really bad boy. <laughs> How dare you ignite the champion you're trying to kill? <laughs> At a certain point, you blame Broxley, you know? Yeah. Wild Turtle looking for a quick trade there and <laughs> jumps up on the graph. Good job. <laughs> the other team. Good job, good job, good job. Uh, we are into the period of the game, though, where we get to highlight the split pushing factor for Dignitas. Uh, you know, as previously mentioned, Renekton and Akali, two of the best split pushers, considering Renekton gets an early lead. It will drop off, though, especially if. You know, I always really want to track who the Anathema's chain or Anathema's chains mm -hmm. is on at the moment. Mm -hmm. Finn will start to outscale, but currently Renekton's still very far ahead. And you can see the split push kind of took effect before they collapsed for Dragon. Top side pushing for Dig. Bottom side, Yusui returning to it real quick yep. here to push it as well. Smoothie gets Stun. chucked out. And hits Acadian. Good arcane shift by Neo. Uh -oh. Mid pushed in by Turtle. True shot barrage. It's only on to one. Mundo's going to be okay with that one. You've got no Leona ultimate, and you've got Leona chunked down to 60% you know, there at the beginning of the fight. He's chucking potions now. Goes to Relic heal over there on the wave, but without that big ultimate, that is kind of the structure of their team fight. Everything is out the window here for CLG, and Dignitas can slide right in. And the mid lane wave was manicured, right? It was cut down in time. It was cold, so there was no counter push. And mm. as you mentioned before, right, top lane pressure is already there. With Dignitas owning the bottom river, they get to own bottom lane as well. And so CLG do not get a single counter punch. They tried, they set up, they were there on time. They went for the ulti, but no <laughs> engage. So you went for the one shot, the shot was blocked, and it's time to reload. We'll see you in five minutes. They've got a monopoly on rivers. River Baron's Dignitas. Nice. They control the uh, you control the trade routes. That's one of the earliest strategies. Ooh, true. Control all the trade uh, the early trade routes, and you can control the income. And that's what you want to do with a one three one. Funnily enough, Renekton and Akali can do just that. They both still have teleports available because there was no conflict at that dragon forcing it out, and they were able to recall first setting up on the dragon. So immediately reset your one three one back in action. Guess what? Ezreal Alistar still extremely safe can hold the wave in mid. And you see, Ooh, here we go. Damage across the mid laners. Ulti flash. Which one is it? Gets it right. Yasui knocks down Poe, but a counter punch is in. They might have owned the river, but can CLG own the turn? It's Yasui trying to run away now, looking to get back to his turret. Ulti comes across. Broxa flops down on him and takes away the champion. <laughs> is it a flop? He's he's like jumping with his sword. It's, straight it's forward. It's a poker pun, Kobe. I use river, turn, and flop in the same call. Uh, uh, I'm not a poker player, but I like that. Thanks, man. <laughs> I was proud of that one. He said river. I'm like, I'm thinking of it. Can we get there? And we could. I like to think that now you'll get more credit <laughs> because you yeah. got to flame me for not getting it. <laughs> That'll help. It will. So there you go. I'm also <laughs> I'm Thanks, helping man. here. Thanks, so, man. This is the moment that uh, he he realizes which one it is after the the variation in movement there from the uh, non clone right. gets the kill. On the outside though, you your E comes back up. It's not gonna be enough distance, and there you go, <laughs> gets the flop what? in from Proxa. <laughs> I realize that sounds really stupid without context. Uh, that's, I was like, oh, it's interesting. <laughs> okay. But you've explained yourself, and I will accept. You approve? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is why you're the Obi of Froby. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Sacrificing for the greater good yeah, of man. the duo here, baby. All right. Warding up here <laughs> on the Blast Cone for Dignitas uh, in preparation for this move. Again, since the teleport not forced out. They could still add Fake God. Push out on top side once again. Small Ooh. incremental. Flash headbutt pull. Brox is down below 1k. Gets away to his life. Now, a good solar flow is going to find the next target. Akading versus his own his hourglass. And it's time for Pobalt to be attacked. Jumps away. Stays alive. Distortioning back. But now Fake God wants in. Flashes for the stun. Shane's going to land at the wrong time because he gets the first bit. Now, who guesses right? It's Pobalt or he's found out. Rock about distortion back. Just on to the Dominus. And Fake God claims the kill at the end of the day. Two okay. Gets a blue buff. Good job. Finn will not be stunned and gets back to his side of the map.
but still one for zero as CLG claimed their own blue buff. Yep, and Dig Toss, that means you can keep on pushing. They finally pull their teleport from top side. Fake God comes in, he flashes to ensure that they get this kill. Tracking down Poe Belter on the bottom half. Uh, no extra mechanical shenanigans coming out with some crazy, you know, clone movement or anything to try and uh, distract them. And Dignitas, oh, they actually don't, they actually go for the resets instead. That, that's probably better. I was gonna say, okay, everybody pile on and get your objective afterwards with your bottom turret, but the, the tempo that you get from resetting here to be able to get your, uh, you know, wards back out to Baron is more important. Here's the engage though from Aphromu. He started it all out and Pobelto was looking for the assassination on Acadian, but Acadian still out of his Zonias, uh, pops his ultimate there and Pobelto can't finish it off. So Fake God flashes on him, ensures that they finish up on this pick. He stays up there, cutting off any sort of escape route, going back to distortion, and just able to walk right back in with his ultimate still ticking. Yeah. Collects his kill. You love to get paid when you use both teleport and your flash for the kill, so in the end, True. the LeBlanc and the gold go right back into the correct hands. All right, feels good for Dignitas. The gold lead, 2.2 thousand a while ago. That has grown, we're looking at about four almost, so nearly doubling what they've had maybe uh, at the 10 minute mark. Oh, Is double or nothing. Time? They all end on that hand. Great. <laughs> yeah. That's that's about the quality of what Poker? I go for. Okay. Good, good, job. good job. Yeah. Poker. No, yeah. I, cool. No, no, <laughs> no complaints here. That was a nice one. All right. Um, keep them bottled in there, Dignitas. <laughs> You've got your reset with your control wards towards Baron, trying to force CLG's hand. And the teleport really used here by Finn. 14 seconds left on Dragon. Oh, Neo. Oh, and another headbutt. Pulp comes in the front line. Smoothie at half. Ulti's going to go wide from Turtle. Not easy to kill Aphromoo, though. Gets sniped, but it's not going to matter. Acadian picks up one, but two come back, actually. Uh, one, two for one so far. And now Yasui wants the chase. Ult comes across, doesn't find a kill. But Diana certainly will. Acadian grabs the third kill of the fight. And it's now Mundo still alive. Brox wants to help. Can Acadian be killed? Gets stunned. Ult comes down, finds it. And now going to take the Diana. But it's not going to be enough. Jumps in, can't find the kill. And Yasui claims kill number four. Finn left alive and alone at the end. Dignitas winning the original fight in four versus five as Fake God had to walk his way up through the river. And with the early health lead there, even getting resets on Broxa does not save CLG's game. Dignitas, they chase him through. Yes, he got the one reset, but Fake God finally arrives. Renekton gets the stun ya. No matter whose soul you steal, and they finish it off. Aphromoo with the return on to Smoothie. And then Smoothie does usually own ultimate on Alistar, but this is two people chunked out in the dive from Dignitas versus just the one support kill on the side of CLG. Yasui there with the R2 barely getting close enough, but guess what? If Yasui doesn't finish the job, Akkadian will. And that's that backline access that we talk about playing these team fights past Mundo. For, for these divers on the side of Dig. They execute it here, and even with the counter kill, able to finish off that stun. It was close with another ultimate in cast there from Broxa to try and, you know, maybe get those dream resets, pull back mm -hmm. the fight. If you could finish off Akali, steal the Akali body, body, then maybe he pulls some magic out there, but not close enough. Yeah. Well, Finn still looking to be the big carry on the CLG side. It really does have good mid-game team fighting. As you mentioned, though, right, the targets matter. 2,000 damage Renekton will not kill him. It will if it's someone like Neo or Yasui. And yeah, you ignore the Mundo for a while, he will get the damage in. His Mythic's now done. He's got Sunfire Aegis. That's going to be, you know, a lot of extra damage there. But, you know, does CLG live long enough for Finn to finish more than one or two kills? Because the last fight went four to two. It was Dignitas who got the objectives. Dignitas who got more gold. And hey, nice that Broxa picked up some money there, but that's not going to be enough. Yeah, and with double Zonias available for both of the divers there, Akkadian and Yasui, there's no reason not to go for these, you know, big dives around Mundo back into the back line. Going to be very interesting to track CLG's attempts at the comeback here because they don't have a lot of options with areas have been swept out here from Dig, and you're generally looking for the Leona Varus combination onto somebody who's face checking or out of position and trying to burst them down. If you can burst down one or two people, then you open up your comeback opportunity of actually capitalizing into a meaningful objective. But Dignitas have no reason to give this opportunity to them. And the teleports being available for both split pushers. Once again, you gain control of the minion waves. Yeah, TP advantage for both souls of Dignitas, as you mentioned in Kobe, is the top lane pressure is going well for Yasui. Finn feels like he may have outscaled the matchup somewhat. It's the Mundo who has pressure down there. No. 
Sure, Fake God hits the W, pops off the cask, and, you know, eats that so that there's no heal for Finn, but it's still the Mundo who's got the lane pressure. Takes some decent damage into the Ezreal, who is going for Surreal to third. I think I actually like that one a lot, based on the fact that he's got to hit some front line and isn't in a lot of danger. Yasui going to be chained, has to flash! Getting over the Baron wall to stay alive. Walter did have what it took to get that kill, so intelligent to make that one come through. But now they're going to poke back and forth. Maybe Baron can be a cheeky setup here. Renekton pushing the bottom lane. Fake God's about to find himself the bot lane outer turret, but Acadian about to burn his Zonia's hourglass to stay alive. The chain could have meant to kill. So now comes the TP. Flash done. Goodbye to Wild Turtle. Did not have his own flash to get away. And Isui's in for the second. Walter is gone. And Finn could have chased down an assassin, but what does it matter? You are 2v5 yet again. They kill everyone but the two bruisers and just walk away and start the Baron. Yes, sir. Guess what? You chase too long and you open yourself up to teleport flank. Then the assassins have a stun to work off of. Fake God easily nails that one, and that is going to be Dignitas Baron. Well done. Baron secure is in. They trinket everywhere they can. They put the control wards down. Prox is no war in sight. Okay, it's ours. The Dick Baron is easily secured. The Red Bull Baron <laughs> buff is on. The power play should include an Infernal Soul and quite possibly an inhibitor or two as well. The Dignitas fans get to say the Baron is coming home because Dig Baron is yes. <laughs> the oldest meme in the LCS. I love it. There's the assassination. Wild Turtle, now you see him, now you don't. And Yasui follows it up with the kill on the Pope Belter. Akali level 16 here, so R2. Plenty of execute damage to finish that kill off. They surgically remove the two carries. Continually fighting these fights around the front line, through the front line, uh, is not how you want to do it. And yep. they just finish off both carries until they get the objective. Now, your 131 is further bolstered by Baron buff. All that's left now is the march towards the base. Uh, Finn sad. You know, Mundo wishes he was one who could surgically remove anything, but it's Dignitas doing such a better job of it, finding those incisions and getting rid of the big carries. And Yes, look at the next one now. 30 seconds on Infernal Soul. CLG, I think, correctly stepping up and trying for maybe a last stand here. A turtle with flash up. Hovelter the same. Maybe they can just find what they need. But Dignitas are like, Protect you're in bottom wave. river. Guess what? In the mid lane we go. We'll kill an inhibitor. You see Dignitas running a caravan with this wave. Everybody's just protecting the minions on the way up. Ooh, that is a bit speculative there by Smoothie. I don't like that one at all. They were already grouped up. What are you really getting off of Kadian at that one? Hilzonia's at worst. So now that ultimate's on cooldown, Finn can walk up. The turret's gone anyway. Just sold the dragon. This inhib's already gone. You get the wave? Cool. You won't lose the Nexus. Take the dragon. Take the reset. Go from there. Top lane, by the way, not in a great spot, but also one thing that CLG cannot answer. They realize at the end, okay, indeed, we will grab this dragon. They will delay soul. Fair enough. But mid inhib is gone, and top wave's going soon. Yeah, not, they shouldn't stop there either. Uh, you know, Top Wave pushed in really quickly. They still are going to have the Super Minions arriving in about 20 seconds towards Baron Up Yasui, already opening up that mid lane. So if they can, they can actually time this. Look at the, the beautiful timing. Mid lane already cleared out the minion wave, so that one gets inside. Hope's on a wave. They've got the angle. They know it's 5v4. They absolutely know it's 5v4. Holter could TP at best. It's still four seconds of a channel. First turret's going to go down. There's TP onto a minion. Broxen nearly dead. Finally teleports in, but now without a turret, there's no way you even defend the inhibitor. Why even burn the cooldown? It's not going to change a single thing about the fight. And out goes Dignitas with two inhibitors down. Sure, they delay soul by five minutes, but they just got a whole bunch more gold off four turret kills. Yeah, and now they only have one clear path to finish it out very easily through the bottom side of the map. No, no kind of uh, detour here for Dignitas. Quick reset. Oh, not quite enough for the death cap for Yasui. Oh, yeah, he did there get There we it. go. There is nice. Waiting around, the little trickle of gold comes in, sitting in the fountain. Yeah. And now, Freak, you get to see Akali in all of her Woo. glory. Seven stacks on the Dark Seal, death cap completed, rank two or rank three in the ultimate. You're going to see. Turtle go poof. Yeah, to be fair, uh, Renekton plus Ezreal makes the same thing happen. Turtle is going to be without his shell a lot. Going to have to have game. a really good flash. <laughs> yeah, which is, you know, one thing Turtle's really well known for, so I think he might get away with it. But uh, Ace is looking good. Dignitas just shy of a 10,000 gold lead. Do a third item for Wild Turtle. This Roblox is in. That doesn't feel too bad. But even for good measure, Neo has Hex Drinker. Just in case Pope Belter somehow has the damage, it's not going to be enough here. Time for Botling Tier 2. Baron buff is gone, but that's okay. The gold lead's going to make this one happen anyway. 
Yes, the top side super minions okay. actually were pushed out a little ahead of time, so there is some time here. And Neo, not only does he get chunked down, but Hex Drinker's shield was proc too. So he's actually in range. Uh, uh, well, the red buff's a really big deal, though. Now that he's like past level 16, the red buff region's very, very high. It yeah. scales aggressively with character level. Um, and ultimately, that's going to mean that he's full health the next wave. But Turtle was actually an empowered Q with the W active away from just killing Neo on like a third shot. So there is some threat if the fight goes slowly enough. Yeah. But as you say, just back right off with the red buff. No problem here for them. They continue to whittle down. And now, finally, you see the top double stack super minions made their way towards the base. Yep. The middle ones are already on the Nexus turret, so you really have to take care of the garbage inside your base. There we go. Get rid of the wards as well. The is going to go ahead and grab the rest of it as all of CLG have retreated back to their base to hold their Nexus turrets alive. It means they can walk up and get rid of all the defensive wards that CLG had put down. Baron's up in a minute 10. Not sure they're going to need it. Digantas may just end the game before that comes up as Neo puts the ulti down, chunks off the wave. They get that turret. And now, is it going to be a recall or is it a dedicated siege for bot lane? The wave group of CLG is only so good. They see LeBlanc topside. Yasui still walking through mid. See Smoothie here as well. Now comes the attack on the turret. Puts it at a half HP. Yasui has respect the 1v2. Has the Zonias, I believe. Turret will go down. Ulti's popped in after move a bit low. Stun's going to come through from Smoothie. Not going to matter too much, though. Fake got to the front. Heals back up. Going to be fine thanks to a Gore Drinker. Oh, that is a lot of damage. But Yasui only kills the clone. Now got to be careful. Goes back into stealth. Looks for Smoothie. Can't quite get that one either. But now it's two of CLG chunked out of the fight. Having to go back to the fountain and waiting for the regen. Home guard buff turned off for 10 seconds. They're taking damage. So wait for that one. And now back they go. Final inhibitor is down. Baron's up in 20 seconds. Zignatos make the call to run all the way back. They are not ending the game here. They're playing it more slowly, letting minions knock down turrets. There we go for Nexus turret number one. That is minion wave manicure correct. And now one final recall to look for what the pings to be, say Baron. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because the inhibitor timer for mid is coming up in only 40 seconds. But... The lasting damage of all these double spawned super minions is going to be so much work for CLG to take care of that time is still in Dignitas's favor. And you can just go force them out to check around the Baron and and you'll slowly and passively gain that extra momentum through the through their base because the super minions, if left unattended, will just retake that inhibitor. When you have all three down, it, it's enough to do it. And all that Dig have to do then is draw CLG out onto the map and, and the base cannot defend itself. All right, they walk up and say, do you have wards? Yes, you do. Okay, we got to sweep those. They are going to miss that one ward in the brush, though. So theoretically, some death brush angles are going to be dead. That is a hero ward for CLG, but it may not matter. Dig the toss instead, say, screw the Baron coin flip. There's always a chance Broxa gets the big steal. So look, Dragon Soul. Is basically uncontestable. There's really no way CLG stumps to this one. So we'll send Acadian, we'll send Neo, we'll claim that one. Okay, just check it off the box. I really don't, you know, mind that one. I think it's actually a smart play. Just guarantee you've got it. Infernal Soul is in. Beautiful. Now Baron setup. This is the time where I would prefer a push to retake the exposed inhibitors. Mm. Because I think it's too risky to try and set up and flip a possible Baron. That is a comeback opportunity for CLG. So for Dig, they're, they're actually making the choice to keep Akali towards the bottom side split pushing with the teleports. CLG have their teleports though, so there is a chance for Dit, for CLG. This, this is okay. their chance. They've got a hard commit to this. Well, doing the damage. Acadian taking a fair bit of damage. They don't really want Afro stuck inside the pit. I think they want it to be in a better location to maybe start up uh, another team fight. Mundo going to be answering a call. This should actually work pretty well for Mundo. Yeah, you see, I think it's too risky to do the Baron stuff. That's why I like just taking the exposed inhibitors again, because one inhibitor is defendable. If only yeah. one is down, that is not nearly the the onslaught of pressure that you need to be able to force these decisions from CLG. And the two ex inhibitors being exposed actually give you a pretty good area to fight those fights from, from Dignitas. They've got a long range for Yusui and Akkadian to dive back and kill the carries. Right. Once again, they're pulling them out into the red jungle. They want to force the battle with ward control. Right now, it's, okay, Blue Trinket popped. The only one CLG has. Yusui waiting in the wings. Here comes the team fight. Both are dropped low. Could be dead. Here comes Akali as well. Wild Turtle dropped and executed. Down goes one. Dignitas has wanted the team fight. They have found it, but can they kill Dr. Mundo? 
Finn pops the ult. Big stun comes in. Blast plan to keep him in range. Finn stunned a second time. And finally, Will drop. It took a while, but they've got all the gold they need to get these kills. Dignitas will finally walk into the base. They've got the minion waves for reinforcements, and they will claim this win. Dignitas get back to 518 to 18. 13 to 4 in kills, an 11,000 gold lead, and a couple of final kills to secure it all in the end. Dignitas take a convincing victory over CLG. Good attention to their champ select, you know, playing off the top side, off the Renekton, into Mundo, early power, diving it with the Diana, taking advantage, pushing him in, building up that minion wave, snowballing it then with the Rift Herald on top of it, gaining this huge advantage for themselves and playing the map. Good focus here from Dignitas and, and well executed. It's, it definitely took a while, but they cover each step and yeah. move it forward without any sort of chance of giving up these possible comeback plays to CLG. Well, good confidence builder for Dignitas to come away with the win. CLG, they did find themselves a win the opening of the week. They took down TSM in what looked to be a week full of upsets. And a lot of those did come through. We had the 3-0 week from FlyQuest. We had two wins out of uh, Golden Guardians. Again, the CLG TSM win had looked good, but sadly for CLG, have not been able to replicate the success. We feel like we get glimmers. There's the 3-0 week that started with the 100 Thieves win with the Viacomp. Like, that looked good. People are like, is it time to believe? Have they cracked the code? That fell off. They started beating TSM. Week. <laughs> Great. They started this week beating TSM. Okay, they cracked the code again, playing more sort of normal-ish compositions, right? Like, no longer did it look quite so wild, but... Unfortunately, they have not been able to string together that kind of look. Yeah. And and then this one starting out with a level one where, you know, walking right in, giving first blood, as Ezreal gets to start with Tyr and Doran's Blade is, yeah. is really disheartening, you know, way to yeah. start out a game too. When it's just one of the ones where you're like, oh, this is an attackable one. We yeah. need everyone to be able to get into playoffs at the end of the year. Yeah. So hopefully they can, you know, keep spirits high. For Dig Toss though, yeah. you know, racking up another one here. They've they've gone through their own tumultuous mm -hmm. split with the roster changes and do seem like they, they've come into their own as far as how they want to execute. Yeah, and, and they're close to locking playoffs, by the way. I believe around like 19, uh, about 20 wins, I think, locks playoffs. Yeah. about the number here. And uh, they're at 18, right? So win two or three games with the last round Robin and you are into the top eight. You're battling FlyQuest and Immortals primarily for an upper bracket spot. That seems doable as well. So we'll see how long their season goes as well. Now we're going to hand it over to the Tigris and Yasui for our Verizon post game interview. Thank you, Freak. So excited to get to speak to Yasui after this dig victory. Akali plays for days, every turret knocked down. How would you evaluate Dignitas Quantum Pace performance? Um, I thought it was a pretty clean game. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think we made any like super big mistakes and we just snowballed off our advantages early. So it was good. You looked very comfortable on your pick today. And I want to talk to you a bit about your journey here in the LCS because in his TGI interview, Acadian was speaking about how when talking to you, you know, the LCS pressure of this opportunity, trying to manage that with play. So how do you take that into consideration, the opportunity of showing out here in the LCS while also just focusing on your play as an individual? Um, I mean, for me, I, I'm confident that I have the skill to be here. I just haven't been playing my best on stage. Like, I think consistency has just been an issue for me uh, so far, but it is going to come with time and every game helps. Um, yeah. Yeah, performances like these show us that you definitely deserve to be here in that effort to get more consistent. Is there anything in particular that you are focusing on as a player? Um, I think communication's a big deal uh, when you're playing at the highest level. I think in Academy, it's easier to shine just off individual skill alone and you can kind of just do your own thing. And I think I got too used to that style of play, which was just kind of like playing off my own individual leads and just autopiloting. Uh, but at the LCS level, it's really important that you work well with your team. It's a big deal. So that's probably my biggest focus over overall. And in that effort to work well with the team, uh, we hear that Aphromoo is kind of the primary shot caller, Acadian also supplementing in that way. Is it just listening to the ways that they're making calls to try to be more in tune, or is it you contributing what is happening in your lane? I think for mid lane, especially when when you're playing the champs that I do, which are like bruisers and just assassins, aggressive side laners, basically. It's really important that you communicate what you need to succeed in the game, whether you're side laning or 
like a specific team fight condition, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I can't just sit back and like listen to what they're saying. I have to contribute um, and set up a, a plan around me as well. Well, you didn't sit back today. You showed out here on the stage. You see, thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, thank you. That was our last game of the day here at the LCS. We're going to kick it to a break, but on the other side, we'll be breaking it all down in the Bud Light Breakdown. See you there, friends. Welcome back to the LCS. After a week of shakeups and upsets, the running for MasterCard Player of the Week was tough. But in the end, it goes to Licorice. It does. And look, even though the team went 2-1, we have to look at the strength of schedule here. He had TL, TSM, 100 Thieves. That's Alfari, Huni, and Someday. These are some mm. of the monsters of top lane, and Licorice really outperformed them all. Multiple solo kills in lanes in two of those games. And this is after him just switching to a new team. So this is an incredibly performance by Licorice as an individual player, which showed sort of uh, ghosts of Licorice past, right? Which everyone was excited to see yet again. So Licorice, well-deserved.
Yeah, Captain Flower is calling out that FlyQuest Licorice has disconnected. C9 Licorice has joined, but now it's GG Licorice really showing out in multiple games. Almost feels like, can we give them a little credit for FlyQuest's performance as well, since the trade worked out for both teams? Yeah, you know what? Maybe he made two teams better this week, so even more of a player of the week. Yeah, as people that are genuine fans of the LCS, getting to see Licorice pop off this weekend, did that strike any of your heart chords? It did, right? Because, you, you know, he had an interview earlier in the split where he talked about, hey, when I came into the league, I sort of had a silver spoon. I was on this elite team. I switched to FlyQuest. It's a team that's struggling a bit more. He has to take on this captain role, you know, and start to do shot calling. And you could see it affecting his play. This has been a good opportunity for him to reset and still show that he can hang with the absolute best. Yeah, genuine happiness from him in the squad after that victory and genuine happiness from the fans out there as well. But for now, we are going to throw it over to our friends for the Bud Light. Breakdown. Thank you very much, the Tigris. Uh, Licorice picking up MasterCard Player of the Week. Uh, greatest week to week turnaround by a single player in LCS history. It's getting there. That's pretty damn close. I'd have yeah. to look through the history books. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's I was fair. Like, oh, you, you have it all up there. Right? It all out there. You, you know didn't what? just like fast forward. Open the brain up <laughs> just to take a peek. It's uh, it's got to be an in contention for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for him to go on to a new team, especially after what was a heinous losing streak, and then perform at this level. You know, it's always one of those things where the team and the player try and tamper the expectations, saying it's going to take a while. And then you're like, wait a second, it didn't. <laughs> it <laughs> it took great. one game. It happened in one game. Yes. I want to call out uh, some of the other, uh, you know, people that were kind of in the running because this was a really uh, big week for a lot of players. I think NXI should be called yeah. out. I mean, the entirety of FlyQuest, but yes. I think NXI in particular performed really well. And then, uh, you know, Danny and Ignar both had just a phenomenal week. And this is the second, like, you know, co uh, continuing EG's win streak. They won every single game. They went up against some tough opponents. And I thought their bot lane in particular performed really, really well. So I wanted to especially call out them because I do think this player of the week in particular was definitely the closest uh, and the most contentious that we had in terms of like, and, and it's not, that's not to say that like they, they all deserve it, right? Like, you know, it's, you have to pick one, but there were so many standout players and so many mm -hmm. standout performances this week. Yeah. And so like just kind of zeroing in and what it means for evil geniuses to have, uh, you know, Woo. Danny and Ignar performing at this level because the conversation for so long for Evil Geniuses has been like, yeah, the top side of the map is doing fantastic, right? And Ignar is great when he's roaming, but what about the laning phase? Like, what about the team fights, especially from front to back? And, like, Danny has been huge. Uh, for me, watching the, the, the team fights, Ignar has always still been there, so I'm sure they'll get it at some point. I mean, like, that, <laughs> they're on that streak. <laughs> it's only growing. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be fun. win streak for them. There it is. Uh, I mean, for myself, I'm amazed at the fact that they just snuck into the conversation. Not even conversation. They are top three. They're tied for top three yes. as yep. a team. That kind of We were so focused on so many other storylines, I think, given uh, 100 Thieves and TSM kind of con constantly battling for first place. Yes, we have been talking about Danny and Jazuke as individuals, but not necessarily talking about what all of that meant for EG as a team in terms of the way they were building themselves up as contenders. And I think that if we were to take a step back because of how spring split bleeds into summer split yeah. in the stand, Mm. They're literally tied for second place, Evil Geniuses, that is, with TSM, yep. based off the summer record alone. Yes. So that makes it easier for people to like be like, yeah, actually, you know, I wasn't watching this team close enough rather than just knowing, yeah, they're on that eight-game win streak. The team is performing massively. And just taking a look at the standings, it is what it is. They are just there and are on fire. Yeah, and one thing I think that has been a true strength for this team, uh, going back to Danny, is that he is such an aggressive player. He's going to go for some of these plays that other AD carries might not go for. Like, you can tell, especially when he plays Tristana, he knows when he can go in to yeah. do damage and, and still has the jump out. Um, and that is such a massive culture fit for this EG team, right? So it means that, to Artemis's point when we had him on desk, even when they make massive mistakes, they can make it up somewhere else. Yeah. They, it's still really easy to force correct <laughs> because everyone on the team is thinking the same thing. I think he tweeted today after the match, that was an int, but it was, a, but also a win. You know, like literally <laughs> within the same game, the dichotomy uh, of it all was encapsulated in such yeah. a short fragment. The other team I wanted to call out, as you referenced summer split records, Cloud9. 
Yeah. Yes, they are still tied for third, but nine and nine. They're sporting the worst summer split record out of the top five teams currently. Yeah, they're the team that's kind of maybe switched bodies in terms of consistencies with mm -hmm. the evil geniuses in that sense. Because now I felt like we got past the whole conversation around scuttled meme, sure, but like just early game inconsistencies, yeah. right? Uh, that's all I really care about is like early games having a consistent uh, first 10 minutes. So then when you can go into your 15 minutes, you can actually have something that you, is reviewable. Um, so when you are still on kind of different wavelengths of like, hey, Jace is taking per, uh, top wave yep. Yep. while we're still fighting for Scuttle, you hate it, to see it. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, if you hadn't pointed it out, I will, because I feel like that play is like a microcosm for like, it's not even, you know, so-and-so is doing something right and the other person's doing something wrong. It's just you guys need to be on the same page, whatever you're doing. Right, yeah, Scuttle meme does not die until you stop dying at Scuttle. Yeah, Simple as that. Uh, FlyQuest, I know we already kind of mentioned them in talking about Player of the Week and yeah. the awesome performance from a number of those players as individuals. But again, when looking at the league holistically, I feel like all of a sudden they're a front runner in that conversation of which, I mean, Golden Guardians... Licorice, they're definitely in there as well. But if this FlyQuest uh, roster performs at the level that they were this week to pull a 3-0 and continue that through the rest of the split, those somewhat said in joking, uh, <laughs> you know, things in interviews about, like, we're looking at worlds. Are, like, that, that, can, that, that it. could be a reality. You know that could be a reality we live it. in later this yep. year. That's exactly the attitude I want to see people have. I love, I love it. it. I absolutely love it. Because I know, like, the for me, Spring Split felt like a, a three kind of horse race, right? Between the likes of... How many horses are we dealing with now? We got a lot of horses. <laughs> right? we, got, we got a ton of horses. I mean, I mean, we still have a ton of games to go through still, yeah. right? True. Uh, and so, like, for me, even just seeing, uh, you know, Team Liquid and the fact they're bringing in Alfari, like, Dignitas as a team solidifying around their members, right, with the changes that they've had and the, the win that they just got over CLG. Like, I'm still looking at, if we were to talk about the theoretical bottom bracket, like, if that was to solidify, that's competitive. Mm -hmm. So, I really enjoy it. It, it. It's never too early for me to talk about playoff bracket. I'm a bracketeering type of person. <laughs> I love it. I go to bed, All right, look at the bracket, okay. go to okay. sleep. I'm going to stop you then. I'm going to stop you because you talked about Fine, how I'll we have a tonight. lot of games left to play. And this week signaled the end of the second round, Robin. But next week, we will see you back here for more league action where Immortals, they're going to kick things off as they aim to, uh, to take down Cloud9. Then... This on fire fly quest squad, uh, squad rather get quite the test when they face TSM. We got three more matches to kick off the week. That's Friday. Of course, 15 games across the whole weekend. Anything in between? I mean, fly quest versus TSM. That's, yeah. oh. that's such a style mismatch too. Like I think I think TSM are like the the overall like cleaner team. But the fact that this fly quest roster they came out from a so trio week, willing to go for these plays, and when you do that in TSM's face, you know sometimes they have trouble with that. Yeah, I, without a doubt, right? Uh, so I'm going to be very curious to see that one. I think Golden Guardians Evil Geniuses is the other one that I'm I'm at. It's the last game of the day on That's that true. day because of what we've talked about with EG and the consistency they've found. But I'm curious if Golden Guardians might be able to disrupt that. They were the team that brought out mid Callista today. Is EG prepared awesome. for that? Are you prepared for that? I wasn't prepared for that. I was none I, of I us. None I, I was of like, us were prepared for that. I even tweeted, I even tweeted for that. after the game. I was like, I did I fully did not have the confidence in this in, in this roster to be able to pull off this composition, I yeah. was like, I don't think Golden Guardians can do it because it, it's kind of tricky. And then I was like, and I was wrong. Yeah, and, and you didn't great. have the confidence. Can you imagine Licorice? He's like, I just joined the team. All right, guys, what do we think about playing this week? Oh. They're like, oh, we play a lot of mid Callista. You ready for that? Came <laughs> oh, boy. It worked out. Hey, man, he's the one that came in with the trundle pick. You know what? That's so true. He yeah. Right he's got that top lane. And then I got fans. Yeah. So, you know. All righty. Well, the LCS action is wrapped up. The show will continue over on the Bud Light League Lounge where I, myself, I'm going to get cozy with Kadian, with Kaizen, and Latigris for general goofiness. Goofiness. I goofiness. promise you that on twitch.tv slash Bud Light. But for now, on behalf of myself, the casters, the analysts, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other. Good night. Wow. What, what is that? <laughs> Period. What is going on? <laughs>